So I was looking through the comments on my last video and the feedback was great. Lots of good ideas, positivity, great stuff. So I thought I'd try and implement a couple of your ideas. Cracked Emerald suggested using a ball bearing instead of a BB ball for the valve. And I'd actually just bought some of these, so this is an easy change to make. Laser go Laser Gurkha Smerlin, Laser Gurkha. Laser Gurkha Smerlin. Suggested using a non circular shaft and attaching it to the flywheel by using a thin piece of wire or a paper clip. I took half of this idea by designing a square end on the end of the crankshaft, but instead of using a thin piece of wire or a paper clip, I just decided to use a screw instead. Ferrari, Ferrarista, Ferrarista, Ferrari, Ferrarista. What is with these names? Ferrarista. I suggested trying to reduce the vibration of the engine and also to decrease the gap between the piston cylinder part and the crankcase part to try and improve the structural integrity. Structural integrity. I've improved the fit of the front bearing as it was quite loose before, so hopefully now it's tighter, this should reduce some of the vibrations. Um, I forgot to change the gap between the piston cylinder and the crankcase because I'm dumb. Oh, and I wrapped the bottle in duct tape to try and increase the strength of the bottle. I don't know whether this will actually work. So I'm going to try and test the duration of the engine, but I'm not expecting it to be very long, simply because the engine seems to run at such a high RPM, it just goes through all of the air very quickly. So in the future, I'm probably going to try and look to decrease the maximum RPM. But that's for another video. Let's test this one. <laughs> I accidentally reversed the direction of the engine. You stupid! 60 PSI. The connection to the flywheel was a little bit short, so as you can see, it's taken a nice chunk out of the engine. Also, the engine is very good at undoing these screws, and this makes the engine go a little bit crazy and kind of wobble all over the place. And then also, it snapped the rear crankshaft part. What even snapped? So I decided to redesign the rear crankshaft part. I removed the need for a screw by using a square shaft on the rear crankshaft part, which connects into a square slot on the rear bearing part. This way there should be less movement and I can make sure that I get the rear bearing part in the right place. So there's been a bit of an oopsie. So I just snapped this part and I was trying to take it back off. <laughs> I gotta print another one. <laughs> so I reprinted the bottle connection part, but now it seems to be leaking air all the time. Why? So I tried reprinting it again with different settings, still leaks. As I'm trying to test the duration of the engine, having an air leak is not ideal. So I need to fix the air leaks first. Idea number one. So to decrease the amount of air that leaks between the valve part and the bottle connection part, I decided to put the o-ring in this gap here in, instead of on top. And this helped immediately. So now we just need to decrease the amount of air that seemingly leaks out between the threads of the bottle and the bottle connection part. So the first idea I had was to use an o-ring inside the bottle connection part, as Tom Stanton has done in his previous videos. This didn't help at all. Idea number two. So I tried incorporating this bottle plug into the bottle connection part design. The basic theory being that the o-ring will seal- Doesn't matter, didn't work. That was the worst. Idea number three. Lucky idea number three was to extend was to extend the length of the bottle connection part here, 
so that it pushes up against the rim of the bottle and seals it. Initial testing using an old bottle cap attachment was promising, so then I designed a new one which would fit the current engine and printed it off. And then it didn't fucking work. Why is it still leaking? I hate this thing, I hate this thing, I hate this thing. Why is it getting worse? How am I making it worse with every iteration? I don't understand. Why? And now we started leaking through the valve again. So I think it was the print settings or the design of the part which was actually the problem. The walls may not be thick enough so the air is actually leaking out through the plastic. I could probably fix this by increasing the thickness of the part, changing the print settings. But this thing takes a whole evening to print and I'm afraid of printing it off again. And again, and again. And it just keeps leaking. So change of plan, I'm going to use these pneumatic fittings I bought and see if the engine is any less leaky. So I've printed the parts, let's pressure test them. 60 psi. Okay, that's, that's that's enough for me. So I tested it up to 60 psi. Seems to leak less than what the bottle did. So should be better for testing the duration of the engine. The so problem I noticed is that the ball bearing doesn't seal until about 20 psi. I had this problem before with the BB ball and I'm not sure how I can fix this. Oh, and also sometimes this happens. So I managed to get a few tests with the engine running at 60 psi, but for some reason some of the footage looked like it was recorded with a potato. So this is the best footage I've got. And then suddenly this happened. And some in snap. So I pulled the engine apart and this is what I found. Now with all the things to snap, I did not think it would be that. I spoke earlier in the video about how I changed the rear crank and bearing design so that it was more rigid. What I didn't realise was that the push rod catches on the bearing connection part and that this side to side and up and down motion that was there previously actually allowed the bearing connection to move out of the way of the push rod. By making this part stiff, I made it so that it could no longer move out of the way and it jams and snaps the push rod. So basically I just redesigned the bearing connection part so there was a little bit more clearance so hopefully it doesn't catch anymore. So let's try it again. So just by changing from the threaded bottle connection to the pneumatic fittings, the engine duration increased from 11 to 15 seconds. This is approximately a 36% increase, and I think it shows how important minimizing air leaks is. And then I broke it again. Right, so the rear crank snapped in two places, so I think the shaft needs to be thicker and the actual part which connects to the front push rod needs to be thicker. So I think I'm going to have to call it quits with this engine. I'm quite limited with what I can change due to space restrictions, so I'm not sure how I can improve this piece of shit quality engine anymore. So for the next video, it's going to be a whole engine redesign with everything I've learned from this engine and the previous one. Also, if you liked the video, make sure to give it a like because, um, because I appreciate it.